insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 111, Challenges of High School. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my compassionate and understanding co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing okay. Another hot one today. Um, I guess weather's really starting to get crazy now. We were at what, 90 on the weekend, then we went to 60, now we're at 90 again, we're supposed to go to 60 tomorrow, this is just crazy weather. Yep. So how was your week so far? It's <clears> been <throat> alright, I've had a few quizzes so far, Um, nothing too crazy going on. Yeah, you're getting quizzes and tests like crazy, are we coming up on the end of the marking period maybe? Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, that's a good time for it. But that's not what we're talking about. Today, we're talking about the challenges of high school. Uh, This week, we're going to talk about the challenges our teens face when transitioning to high school. We'll take a look at some of the differences between middle school and high school. We'll talk about the higher expectations placed on our kids academically, socially, and personally. We'll look at a few specific areas to be aware of, including time management and study skills, self-advocacy, and the all-important school life balance. Finally, we'll discuss some suggestions on how to make the transition and their time in high school a success. Before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast looking up Insights into Teens, or you can get video versions of the podcast and all podcasts on our network uh, listed as Insights into Things. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback. We're always looking for uh, suggestions for show topics and feedback on how we're doing, what you want us to talk about, what you don't want us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on Instagram. You can get us at www.instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all those and direct email connections to us on our website at www.insights into things.com. Are we ready to get started? I think we are. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the new challenges that kids face in high school. And the research for this segment came from understood.org, a new site we haven't used in the past. They talk about high school and how high school places more emphasis on getting good grades and requires more homework than ever before. High schoolers need to manage their time well, stay organized, and take good notes. And in high school, self-advocacy becomes more important than ever for kids with learning and thinking differences. But for kids in general, self-advocacy is important. The transition from middle school to high school can be a stressful time for all teens. Academic expectations increase. And socializing and extracurricular activities become more important, especially if your child is heading to college. Some of these expectations can create unique obstacles for kids with learning and thinking differences, which we're very fortunate that uh, you don't fall into that category, but there are a lot of kids out there that that do, so they might find some of this information helpful. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about what some of the 
uh, issues with bigger school and age differences are. Why don't you, why don't you start us off with that? So one challenge for high schoolers is adjusting to a new learning environment. The school itself is likely to be larger and have more students than middle school did. While your child may have had practice with switching classrooms between classes and middle school, navigating an even larger school can be tough. She won't only have to keep track of time and know the best path between classes, but she may have to plan a trip to get materials from her locker too. And high schools can often use schedules that vary from day to day. So you've been exposed to a certain extent to the layout of the high school that you're going into, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Is it significantly larger than your middle school? How, how How does it differ from layout and size? I'd say it is extremely larger than my middle school. Its top floor is much larger. It has an auditorium that's larger than our lunchroom and gym room combined. They have two gym rooms. It's madness, to be honest. It's madness. <laughs> I have to be honest with that. So uh, do you feel any sense of anxiety trying to contemplate how you're going to navigate that environment? Yeah, definitely. Um, when we were doing the one tour, like I was surprised at how large the school was, and we only went through part of it. Honestly, I'm very terrified for switching the classes because in middle school, yes, the school was kind of big, but it's way smaller. It's way smaller than the middle school. And well, if I remember correctly, when you first went into middle school, you had a lot of anxiety about switching classes because you were afraid you'd get to your classes late. And after the first couple of days or a week or so, I think you you kind of got the gist of it and you had it down to a system. Mm-hmm. Um, do you fear that you're going to go through all that again in high school or do you think you'll be able to work it out? I probably, I, I do fear that I'm going to go through that in high school because it's a much larger school and I don't know how much time I have to get to my classes. I'm guessing around two minutes, which isn't a lot of time when you're navigating a giant school. Well, and I'm sure that they'll arrange your classes in such a way that you won't have too much of a problem getting back and forth to to your different classes. I hope so. The next thing they talk about is there's often a shift in your class makeup. So in middle school, your child had had different teachers for different subjects. But for the most part, she probably was in the same classes as other students in the same grade. In high school, her classes are more likely to have students from a variety of grade levels. And you'll probably see that more often as you progress through high school than at the lower lower grades. Hmm. Uh, these age differences can be tricky for kids who struggle with school sk- uh, social skills or who are less mature than their peers. Now, the one advantage you have right now uh, because you're joining marching band is you're getting some exposure to the students that are at the high school and and our upperclassmen now, do you have any particular anxiety about associating with upperclassmen if they wind up in some of your classes? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm that type of person who likes being the big fish in a little pond and doesn't really enjoy being a little fish in a big pond. Basically, I prefer being around younger people than people who are older than me. Like, If they're older than me to a point where I think they're an adult, then that's fine. But if they're older than me, yet they're still around the same age, I have different, like, I get intimidated by them. Now, have you had situations where you've interacted with upperclassmen now through marching band that are, that might be helping you get through those types of situations? I mean, a little bit. Um, um, the first two instances, the first two times I went into marching band practice, I was with some of the one, I was with some of them, and I've mainly been interacting with the uh, upperclassmen who play trumpets. Um, but um, actually, this yesterday when we had done um, the practice, they had actually separated all the new people from the people who were who were returning because one of the reasons was because the returning people were doing had to prepare for a parade right um but it was also so that because we were pretty intimidated by, 
a lot of us were intimidated by the older kids, so we kind of, you know, just... So they, they put us apart so that we would at least feel more comfortable doing the visuals. Right. And chances are, your first year in high school, you're probably not going to have too many classes with people outside of your age group. It'll probably be fairly straightforward. You might have a couple, especially extracurricular stuff like the band and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you'll have a chance to get acclimated to the, uh, the differences in the class makeup. What's the, what's the last point that we have? So your child may be exposed to risky behaviors in a way she wasn't before and feel pressured to fit in. This can be especially difficult for kids with ADHD. And it can be hard to get used to... For, and it can be hard to get used to for kids who have trouble following social cues or self-advocating. So do you understand what they mean by self-advocating? Not really. So when they talk about self-advocating, they basically mean speaking up for yourself. Okay. Um, there's different ways that you can do that. There are socially acceptable ways to do it. I think you're aware of some of the kids that self-advocate in a way that make them kind of annoying. You know, those kids that are attention hogs and always need to be the center of attention. Mm -hmm. Then you have those other kids who are the quiet ones and they don't speak up. They don't might not raise their hand. They might be shy. They might not be comfortable interacting in the classroom. Those are the ones that need to self advocate more. And this is something where the high school is getting you prepared for moving on to college. And we've talked about this offline. You and I high school itself is, is a dress rehearsal for college for the most part, whether or not that's fair to the students or not, is is up for debate because not all the kids that are going to go to your high school are going to wind up going to college. And a lot of the coaching and the social norms that they try to instill are really there to, to get you prepared for college. So emphasizing self-advocacy will help you when you go to college because when you go to college, you're not going to have the same kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your teachers or your professors in college that you have in high school. A lot of times the, the teachers are basically there to lecture, hand out assignments, and grade the assignments that you hand back in. The idea is in college, you're learning to be a fully functional adult in the real world where you don't have somebody holding your hand or wiping your nose all the time for you and you have to learn to stand on your own. A lot of times high school is trying to do that for you. They're, they're trying to, to get you to the point where if you have a question, you're going to ask the question. You're not going to wait for the guy next to you to raise his hand and ask the question to get the answer. If you don't understand something, you need to speak up for yourself. If you're not, If you can't hear well where you're at, you need to speak up. It's basically... You looking out for yourself and you doing what you need to do to, to provide for your education when you're in high school. That's what we talk about with self-advocacy. So they're talking about risky behaviors here in the sense of peer pressure. So if all of your friends are uh, smoking and you want to fit in and they're going to make you feel as though you need to take a cigarette and, and light it up and smoke too, or you're not going to fit in. That's the kind of risky behavior they're talking about. Yeah. I was kind of figuring that. Right. You know, it's the stuff that mob mentality type stuff, where if you have to go along with everybody in the group, you know, think about what you're doing and, and make the right choices. You, you don't want to, do something for the sake of fitting in that you know is wrong. So that's that's one of the things that they caution you here to look out for. Um, I think that was all we had for our introductory segment here. I think we kind of have a firm grasp on what we're looking at. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we're going to talk about time management and study skills when we come back. Seven years, 
The Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about the challenges of going into high school. One of the biggest challenges, and we've talked about this numerous times, is time management and study skills. Staying organized enough to get everything done can also be a struggle in high school. Various learning and thinking differences can cause trouble with time management. In-class work can be hard for teens who struggle with taking notes. They may not be sure what they need to write down, or they may struggle to keep up with what the teacher is saying. Specific note-taking strategies can help, along with note-taking apps. Now, I, you know, I take notes constantly at work on conference calls and in meetings and, and stuff like that, and I use OneNote. There's Evernote. There's various other note-taking applications. One of the other techniques <clears throat> that you'll find used more in, in college, I think, than high school is recording the uh, lectures that your teachers give. Uh, and you can get <clears throat> a fairly inexpensive digital recorder these days that will allow you to record, you know, the, the conversation that happens in the room there. You just probably want to make sure that the teacher is okay with that before you do it. Uh, what that will allow you to do is, is afterwards you can go back and replay certain parts of that to make sure that you did get everything that you needed there and go back and take notes and reinforce your notes based off of the recordings that you take. I used to do that uh, all the time. I do that in meetings now, so I can go back and and uh, look at where my notes are. Uh, one of the advantages or one of the features in uh, OneNote is if you record the audio while you're um, taking notes, it will actually annotate the notes as you play through the audio so you can see where you were at the time. So it's very good to keep track of your thoughts that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, with more work and tests, your child also needs to have strong study skills. She may have assignments in different classes with the same deadline. It may be helpful to learn strategies to study for tests and try studying in ways that complement her learning strengths. So that's one of the things we're probably going to have to do is change the way that, that you study. Uh, right now, when you have tests or quizzes coming up, you and I tend to, to go over the stuff and study it. And I try to challenge you in ways I don't I don't just read down the study material. I ask you questions in different manners. Instead of giving you the question, I'll give you the answer and you give me the question. These are all different study techniques that help you remember things better. If I can ask you the question and get the answer, then I should be able to give you the answer and get the question the same way. And after a couple of iterations, it works and it sticks in your mind that way. So We'll probably have to explore some of those different study techniques as, as we go through high school. Okay. What else do we have? Next up is self-advocacy. In high school, self-advocacy is a big focus for kids with learning and thinking differences, and not just with peers. As the, expect as the expectation to be an independent learner grows, your child will need to start play playing a bigger role in her education. Asking questions, seeking help, and speaking up about her needs become increasingly important. She may be expected to understand and discuss her learning differences and start asking for the ac accommodation she needs, but that can feel overwhelming for some kids. It's important to find ways to self-advocate and let her feel comfortable. 
And what they're kind of referring to here is that if you do have certain learning needs that aren't being met, the, the first one that comes to mind for me, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a learning disability, it could just be you might be sitting someplace where you can't hear the teacher talk. So you might need to have your seat move. You may not be able to see uh, the presentation or the whiteboard. You may need to move for that. So that's some of the things that, that everyday students can encounter. But there are students out there that need a little extra help. You could be dyslexic. Uh, I have a friend of mine whose son is dyslexic, and there's special learning techniques for the kids who are dyslexic. And, and when they look at letters, the letters themselves get jumbled. So there's different learning techniques they have. There's different tools that they have to help out uh, kids that are in that situation. We already mentioned uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's different learning techniques for that as well. You know, a lot of times ADHD is treated uh, medically, but there are methodologies that teachers are aware of today that will help kids who suffer from ADHD to learn better without having to resort to, or in addition, maybe in addition to, you know, medical uh, treatment for it. So the self-advocacy is, is basically you making sure that, that you have the tools that you need and mommy and daddy can't help you with that because we're not in the classroom. We don't see these issues that you're running into. And a lot of times kids tend to think it's them. You know, oh, I don't understand what the teacher's saying. I'm dumb. Well, it's not that. Maybe it's not being explained in a way that you understand. A lot of times you'll find if you don't understand it, other kids don't understand it. And I think you've encountered that to a certain extent uh, this year with the remote learning where, you know, you've had situations where you were given an assignment. The teacher explained it, but you didn't understand it, and it turned out other kids. Why don't you give us an example of that? Um, hmm. I think one happened in your math class at one point, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, hmm. I can't think of a specific. Hmm. Hang on. Because I remember there was there was one instance where you came to me worried that you didn't understand, and there was a quiz coming up. And the teacher had a special session after that. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah, I remember. It was like, I remember that I was having difficulty um, with, like, I think, I don't know if it was, like, the, I think it was the test review because I'd kind of done poorly on it. And, like, I was, like, so scared and I was so upset and, like, I was I just realized I did so bad and like I had asked her if I could like if there was a way that I could like do have like a stu a better study session and apparently so many other kids did poorly that she ended up having an entire day where we had a conference going over everything. Right, and that's one of those situations where had you not spoken up or a couple other kids not spoken up, everyone would have suffered from it. So from a self-advocacy standpoint, when there's a situation where you don't feel you're getting the instruction that you need or the way that you need it, you speaking up not only helps you, but it has the potential for helping other students that are in the same boat who might not feel comfortable speaking up. So self-advocacy self is very important. It's also very hard to say, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next thing they talk about is the school life balance. After school activities or a job can make staying on top of things even more complicated. Both are great ways to make friends. They're also a great way for your child to explore her interests and find things she loves to do. But because they take, take up time, jobs and activities can make it hard to get everything else done. For some kids, it's also a reason for avoiding doing schoolwork that's challenging. If it seems like too much for her, she may want to volunteer instead. And I think by saying that, they're, they're saying that the expectations on you as a volunteer are much less than if it's a club you signed up for or a job that you actually take. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure she's ready for a job, you can begin by working on job readiness skills at home. 
So this is one of those things, and, and I can kind of speak from experience that when I was in high school, for several years in high school, I was working a job. I wasn't working full time, obviously, but I would work a retail job. I would start at, you know, three o'clock or whatever time I got done school. I got home, I got changed, went to work, and I would work until nine. And I would do that a few days a week. And it was a great way to learn because I was working in uh, a, an industry or in a field that I wanted to work in with electronics and computers. It was a good way to make money. I met a lot of people. It was fun. I enjoyed the work, but it put a lot of demands on me. I didn't do a lot of extracurricular stuff uh, from that point. I had already hurt my ankle, so I couldn't play football anymore. So that was kind of out the window. But academically, there were some challenges that I had to deal with, and I had to adjust my study schedules because if you're working from the time you leave school until 9 o'clock when it's almost time to go to bed, there's not a lot of time to study or do homework. Some of it was uh, working a uh, study hall into my my school schedule, so I wound up having a second period uh, study hall there so I could get assignments done during that or I could study for tests for that. Um, but there's different things, different compromises that you have to make in order to make that balance work. The idea of, you know, being in school and only doing academic stuff is really not what anyone's searching for. Uh, you're in marching band. So that's something that's going to take some time. What, what kind of demands on your schedule do you think marching band is going to have? Well, on... I think that until November on on Tuesdays at six to eight thirty, I'm PM. I'm doing marching band practice, and more than likely, I'm also going to have um, competitions that I'm going to, and there's probably going to be a bunch of other stuff that I haven't encountered just yet. So, now your competitions are they during the week or are they on the weekend? I think. I believe they're supposed to be on the weekends. I don't really know too much. Um, okay, so that's one extracurricular activity that you're doing. Was there anything else that you were looking at uh, so far, or just that? Um, I was also planning on doing concert band, hopefully. Um, so, and that's probably, I think, last all year. So, um, I'll probably do that. Well... Well, because marching band only lasts until November, <clears throat> um, but I think concert band lasts all year. Now, is con does concert band have after-school activities? I'm not entirely sure. I still have very little information. Okay, so you'll probably have at least two concerts that are after school. They may come with rehearsals. Uh, I know when I was in high school, I was in choir, and we did uh, after-school rehearsals a few times. So that's that's certainly a potential, and there may be other clubs that you decide you want to get involved with. It's just a matter of making sure we we balance everything out and know what's a, what the priorities are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to take another quick break. We'll come back, and we're going to talk about ways to help your high schooler. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about the challenges of high school. And um, now we're going to be talking about ways to help your high schooler. 
It may take some time for your child to get used to high school. It may also take some time for you to get used to having a child in high school. These, um, the staff may not try to get to know parents as much as you'd like or or are used to. There are many different rules than there were at your child's middle school, and policies around tardiness, electronics, electronics use, and absences may be adhered to more strictly. That's why it's important to know how to contact your child's teachers. Download and fill out a contact sheet and see an example of an of an effective email to a teacher. Um, explore conversation starters to use with teachers and find ways to s- talk to teachers about specific learning and thinking differences. High school can be an exciting but challenging time. By staying in the loop with your child and her teachers, you can help her overcome challenges and find success. Yeah, this this kind of points out a, another interesting aspect that we haven't talked about yet, and that's how does high school change for the parents? So high school is going to change because your your teachers aren't as hands-on as they are now in, in middle school and the lower grades. Um, you know, I mean, we still keep in touch with uh, some of your teachers. And Mommy, fortunately, was, was friends with one of them, but uh, there's one particular teacher that you talked to not that long ago from your grade school time. You're not going to get that kind of treatment probably in high school, and that's simply because of the volume of students that the teachers have to work with. Mm-hmm. Not only are the teachers trying to get you prepared for college, they deal with a lot of lot of students, a lot more than, than most of your other teachers do. So for us to have direct contact with your teacher as your parents, we need to be a little bit more prepared for that. We need to understand that we're not going to be getting progress reports or, or personalized reports on you as often as we might now. Typically, we only get them if there's something wrong, which there usually never is. But even parents have to get used to this. You know, we're going to have to get used to your change in schedule, your change in your study habits. Maybe we need to have dinner a little bit later so that you can get homework done when you get home from school now. Uh, maybe we need to switch days that we do things on the weekends because you have projects that are that have to be done or you have extracurricular activity. So I assume being in marching band, you're probably going to be preoccupied a portion of the weekend at the football games where the marching band performs. Certainly you're going to be going to competitions, like you said. Is there anything else that you can think of that might impact mommy and daddy? Um... Probably the fact that you'll see me grow up in the next few years. That's certainly something to be aware of, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, being, like, even being in my first few years of being a teenager, like, a lot of times kids are kind of drifting away from their parents at that time, but, well, because of the pandemic and I guess just because of my, um, connection to you guys i really haven't started doing that um but going into high school that might be something that could end up happening and i might not even know it sure and even if you look at it from a a socializing standpoint you're going to spend more time with your friends as you get further along in high school you're going to hang out with your friends you're going to uh, go to the mall with your friends for instance you may go to the movies with your friends there's more opportunities for you to be out of the house between your schedule with the high school, your extracurricular activities, and all the new friends that you're going to be meeting. Because, you know, you have a few friends that you have now. You have that core set of friends that you've grown up with now. But the one thing that you're going to find in high school is you're going to be introduced to a whole new slew of people, both older and younger than you as you go through high school, that you're going to wind up socializing with. So that's something that, you know, that empty nest syndrome that parents have to sort of get used to. Um, So parents have to definitely be be on top of contact information for your teacher moving forward with that. Is there anything else that you think that parents need to be aware of as their kids 
transition into high school? Um, besides contacting teachers, uh, I guess trying to help you, um, I guess maybe helping your student meet their needs, but that would technically be also messaging the teacher. Sure. That's valid. Um, how about something like, um, costs? Is there any additional costs that parents need to be aware of? Um, maybe with certain things, there could be an additional cost. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know the specifics right now for certain things. Um, I think from a fashion standpoint, the, the cost of clothing will go up. Your cost of your school materials may go up. Uh, kids are nowadays kids are more technology centric than they ever were before. So schools don't provide all of that stuff. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important for parents to be open minded about new friends that you might be meeting. Um, I would assume that you're probably going to be exposed to a more diverse group of students than you have in the past. Uh, the demands on your time from friends will go up. So parents need to sort of be aware of that and that the time that they spent with their kids might start to evaporate. Any other warning signs that uh, mommy and daddy should be aware of? Um, hmm. I guess maybe, um, hmm. I mean, yeah, the demand of friends will go up. The demand of time centered on work will probably go up. Um, How about privacy? Do you think you're going to need more privacy as you age into the higher grades? I would think that there would be instances where I'd probably want a bit more privacy um, and not want you guys to be on top of me. Um, but you're not really on top of me right now, for the most part. How about independence? Do you think you'll need to exert your independence a bit more? Probably, yeah. Especially, like, starting to get to the point where I'm about the age of an adult where I can actually do things that most adults do and that I won't legally be considered a child. So, yeah, probably independence will more than likely um, go up, especially since they're preparing you for college. And college... You kind of have to have the independence and do independent work a lot, so. Absolutely. So these are all things that, that really parents need to be aware of and keep in the back of their mind because it, your, your child going into high school isn't just a change for your child. It's a change for everyone. The whole family uh, gets to deal with high school years. Yep. Uh, so just some quick key takeaways um, before we go. Encourage your teen to have good study habits and help her keep track of when assignments are due. Kids in high school need to stay motivated, which, by the way, we'll be talking about in next week's podcast. Spoiler. Um, they need to get their work done on time, even if they're involved in extracurricular activities. Uh, learning how to speak up for themselves can build confidence and keep kids from feeling overwhelmed. How do you, how would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best? How would you rate your ability to speak up for yourself in school right now? 6.8. That's actually not bad. I, I was surprised to, to hear that you're rating it that high. I mean, I'm mainly doing that from the experience of being virtual because I was able. I it. I feel as though it's much easier to ask questions when I'm virtual, but there are still certain instances where I'm like, mm, right. should I? Um. But when I was in school, I did have difficulty asking for help. Um. I would rarely raise my hand to answer questions because I'm like, what if I'm wrong? I'm more than likely wrong. Especially in math class, because there's always one to find answer. And, <laughs> like, in ELA, it was a little easier because there was no specific answer. In math, it really wasn't because there is a specific answer. So, I'd say I'm not horrible at asking questions. I can definitely ask questions, so I'm more than halfway. But I'm definitely not, like, 
I definitely don't ask um, every... I definitely can't ask all the questions that I have. So let me ask you this before we wrap things up. What are the three biggest fears that you have right now going into high school? Uh, the workload's probably one of the biggest ones. Um, pretty sure that's kind of an obvious one. Um, high school has actually, uh, middle school has actually been a lot easier than really anticipated. And I mean, this year has been pretty easy because it's all virtual, like I've been all virtual. Um, so that's been probably the easiest. So going from a pretty easy year to high school, high school freshman year is going to be scary. Um, I'm gonna, I feel very intimidated as well, um, intimidated by the size of the school and the fact that I'm around older kids. Like I said, I don't like being a little fish in a big pond. I prefer being a big fish in a little pond. Um, I don't know, I just feel intimidated by people who are slightly older than me. Um, when I, if they're older than me to the point where I consider them adults, then it's fine, but people who are a couple years older than me... I get intimidated by them, especially going to school with them. Um, and the third fear I have, I guess, having to manage both my social and my and my academics. Okay, and I think they are typical, well grounded fears to have going in. And I think most of those can be overcome in the first couple of weeks of high school. I hope so. So I'm sure you'll do fine. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts. All righty. Go for your closing remarks. So to everyone out there who is, go who is more than likely going into high school because I don't know if this would really apply to anyone else. Um, I would say um, try to use the tips um, we mentioned in this video. I'll more than likely try to apply these to my life when I go into high school. And um, hopefully when I do go into high school, by the time I'm in high school and the first few weeks have passed, I'll be fine and we can make a video hopefully confirming that things are good um, because right now I'm actually pretty terrified. And I guess that's kind of normal for anyone going into high school. So... For now, at least, try these tips, and hopefully when I do go into high school and we make a podcast on that, I'll be a lot more confident and be able to say that it's not as bad as it thinks, as oh. it is, as you think. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, sage advice, as always. It's a, it's a great unknown you're going into here, but like everything else you've dealt with, I'm sure you'll handle it fine. Before we do go, I would once again encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of the podcast listed as insights into things video versions are lit um, no sorry audio versions are listed as insights into teens video versions are listed under insights into things on apple Podcasts, spotify google stitcher iHeartRadio, tune in and pretty much any place you can get a podcast i will also encourage folks to contact us you can email us at comments at insights into things.com you can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. High res versions of our videos are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch. You can get us on twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw it our way. Audio versions of the podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothings.com. Or you can get links to all those and more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Well done. I think that's it. Another one in the books. Uh, b b b uh, bye we can wave anywhere at bye this point. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>